Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, February 26, 2014. I'm the gentleman physicist, filling in for Jack this week. Our top story comes from the world of chemistry. For the first time, researchers at Penn State have managed to control a nano-sized motor within a living human cell. While they are essentially just rocket-shaped metal nanoparticles, they show off some interesting properties. Most importantly, they are compatible with the biological environment within a cell. Earlier versions of these kinds of nanomotors relied on toxic compounds to fuel them. However, these new ones can simply be powered by exposing them to low-energy ultrasound waves, also harmless to most biological specimens. At low energies, the nanomotors just sort of move around, bumping into organelles and other structure within a cell. But observing this reveals entirely new mechanical properties that could not be studied before. Increasing the power has even more dramatic effects. If the nanomotor is moving fast enough, it can essentially homogenize the inside of a cell, or punch out of the cell membrane. Eventually, they hope that this kind of technology could even be applied to the treatment of cancer. If the particles could be selectively absorbed and then activated, they would destroy only the cancerous cells from the inside out, and avoid certain side effects of current treatments. While ultrasound waves power them, magnetic fields can be used to steer them in any direction, and even multiple motors independently. This is very new technology, but the researchers are confident that there could be many biological and medical applications if it's refined further. Next is a quick update from the world of biology. Scientists from the University of Guelph have identified two species of bees that started using plastic materials in their hives. Now this isn't to advocate leaving plastic in the environment, but it is interesting to see how certain organisms are adapting to the realities of a human-dominated world. While both species did inhabit urban environments, they did not switch to plastic due to a lack of their usual building materials. One species that normally uses plant resin as a material started using polyurethane-based sealant, such as caulking. The second species usually uses leaf cuttings to construct a hive, but some have replaced a quarter of this with chewed up bits of plastic bags. Again, their usual materials were still abundant, but it seemed like using plastic actually had some advantages. Larvae hatched in these hives showed little to no signs of parasites, and the workers were chewing the new material in a different way, meaning on some level they understood that this wasn't their usual building material. Obviously, we should still be concerned about the bee species, but we may underestimate how adaptable nature can really be. We end with news from the world of neuroscience. A team from the Stowers Institute for Medical Research have been studying an interesting mechanism behind long-term memory formation. Their research suggests that prion-like proteins are essential for long-term memory, which is somewhat surprising since prions are usually associated with disease. To review, a prion is simply a misfolded protein that can cause other proteins of the same type to also misfold. In this way, a single malfunctioning protein can essentially create more of itself, and that can lead to dangerous aggregates, especially when these prions form in the brain. However, this kind of function is also excellent in long-term information storage. The proteins in any cell are constantly being broken down, recycled, and reformed, but a prion-like protein will continue to make more of itself without any additional input from the cell. Based on research they did in 2012, they found that the introduction of a prion-like protein was essentially an on-switch that marked a neuron for long-term memory in fruit flies, and that inhibiting this activity completely disabled long-term memory formation. Continuing with fruit flies, they have now investigated how this system is regulated, since it could potentially lead to a diseased state. The main protein they looked at is called ORB2. One form is highly abundant throughout the brain and stable. Another is scarce and breaks down in about an hour. When the two forms of the protein interact, it seeds the prion-like activity and initiates long-term memory formation. Since one form of the protein is so unstable, the cell can activate the system precisely in time and space using a completely separate protein that stabilizes the rare form of ORB2. It'll be a lot more work to study these mechanisms in more complex animals, but equivalent proteins have already been found in mammals including mice and humans. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode, in reference to our second story. What are some unique ways you think we could help the bees? Let us know your thoughts on that, and all the stories in the comments.